had a dream, Shadow Man, a real bad dream. The five are here. I'm sure like many of you, we sat playing Shadow Man back in 1999, trying to switch it off or pause it every time our parents came in the room and battling defiantly against what were, let's be honest, not the best controls. Originally developed by Acclaim, Night Drive's remaster includes improved shadow mapping, per pixel lighting, anti-aliasing, as well as some content that was cut from the original game. We'll go over how the experience holds up on the Nintendo Switch, check out how it runs in docked and handheld modes, we'll also talk a little bit about the audio and general sound quality, and for those who have never played Shadow Man, we'll finish up with gameplay and controls. Is Michael Leroy a new man, or is he just a shadow of his former self? Well, let's find out. Separating surface of the dead side serpent. I absolutely love seeing the work that some of these studios are doing on retro games to bring them back to life. An excellent example being Turok 2, which was another night dive port. If you've heard of Modern Vintage Gamer, you'll know that he's been working side by side with a lot of the studios to help with these ports, also doing an incredible job with the recently released Quake. Now with that said, the Nintendo Switch version of Shadow Man is running at native resolution, that being 1920 by 1080 when in docked mode, however, it can scale. That means that on paper, it can drop as low as half of that resolution. However, it's not something that I noticed happening often. In handheld mode, you're looking at 720p, but once again, this is using that same dynamic resolution scaling, allowing it to drop to 50% resolution. I've got to give credit to the developer. They've allowed you to tweak many of the settings, which will in turn allow you to tailor the performance a little. Settings include the anti-aliasing, the field of view, so you can adjust how much of the screen you can see, although you do get quite a fisheye lens effect when you stretch that field of view out in this game. You can change whether the new shadow maps are rendered, and in all honesty, this is probably the biggest improvement to the game, so I would leave that where it is. And I guess alongside that setting, you've got the texture quality. You can go with the original blurry mess, or you can go with the new, less blurry, slightly sharper HD textures. From my playtime so far, I'd say that 90% of your experience is buttery smooth, however it's interspersed with the occasional stutters. These feel more like something that needs to be coded out, rather than the game hitting an area that it can't handle, and they are very reminiscent to some of the drops we saw in other older games that were brought across to the Nintendo Switch, whereby the code simply doesn't translate quite right in certain areas. The developers are working on an early patch, it's by no means game breaking but you will find a few areas that are more heavily affected than others. It's the same Shadow Man visual that you always knew and loved, but it's the ambient occlusion and shadows, which while not removing from the original game, improve upon it. In my opinion, this is how you do a remaster while still honoring what was worked on and what was created originally. The janky blocky character models from the N64 days are fully intact and the cubic head of an aggressive dog is just as comical looking as it always was. I think some of the jankiness heightens to the creepiness of some of those latter models. Another area that's seen improvements are the cutscenes. They've now used Nvidia intro cutscene textures. They've up the HUD to be HD as well as the icons. They've put back in animations that were unused and you'll also find new character models in here as well. They've changed the destructibility of certain items and even rearranged the way some of the levels are laid out to more closely match the original intention. It makes for a less confusing layout for sure, although much of my original experience has been lost by the vagaries of time. Lastly then, on the visual side of things, they have added in motion blur if you want to switch that on, you don't. There's film grain and depth of field, all pretty self-explanatory. One area that hasn't been discussed a great deal so far is the incredible soundtrack by Tim Haywood. <sighs> I was able to hear sounds behind the character, but it's that soundtrack which has carried over the best. Sound quality is excellent, and through a semi-decent sound system, I'm really appreciating just how good this OST is. I'm so pleased that they took the time and effort to remaster the sound effects, as well as the soundtrack, which even includes new music and sound effects for those restored levels, which we'll talk about in a bit. Voice acting, maybe not quite up to the same standard. She moves me in mysterious ways, and rather, Sometimes. with characters still feeling like they had to compete with Duke. As far as gameplay and controls go, trying to control this back on my N64 was a bit of a nightmare. In fact, 
I think many of the N64 games, and maybe some of the older ones on PlayStation, you were very often fighting against bad controls, and that's what made the experience so difficult. Having the right analog stick now able to control the camera fully, rather than some strange lock-on mechanic, is so much better. It enables you to side strafe, you can keep the camera centered, and then you can use the trigger to fire your guns. What's also nice here is that you can completely remap the controls to suit your own needs, and having a more modern radial menu for selection is certainly an improvement. It makes it feel much less old, just by having those slight tweaks to the control system. Now, it's not all perfect. There are some things which take a bit of getting used to, such as when you grab onto a ledge. My Tomb Raider muscle memory wants me to press the button to quickly jump up, but doing that will kick you off the wall and send you in a frustrating loop until you overcome that muscle memory and just leave it alone. Throughout the game, you'll find a number of different items which you'll need to equip to your hands to be used directly. And as far as the gameplay goes, well, it's a third person action adventure, but in much of its design, it could actually be compared more closely with a Metroidvania. There's certainly many of the elements from a 3D Metroidvania right here, such as the aforementioned items, but also different skills that you'll acquire to unlock new areas. As well as items to use, there are also a few different weapons, including new ones, replacing the original shotgun with a sword-off shotgun and added in a second violator. It's just a very impressive port from start to finish. It doesn't change the core gameplay, and Shadow Man always had its flaws, even with the tweaks to the level design, there are still times where you might find yourself completely lost, with some areas looking so similar it can be very difficult without a map to find exactly where you're going. I mentioned earlier that they added in three new levels. They include Summer Camp Florida, Salvage Yard in the Mojave Desert and Asylum Station 2. Each area is filled with a number of hidden items to find, but the core gameplay really involves that shooting, strafing and a touch of light platforming. Don't expect a great deal in the way of puzzling. You'll be capturing those dark souls, powering yourself up, and then once your power's high enough shown down in the corner, you can unlock more doors, progress further, and kill more things. There are a number of large boss fights, and these are based on criminals who have been essentially employed by Legion, and they're probably some of the most interesting segments. I remember the thrill of having to fight Jack the Ripper back in the day, and while it's a bit easier now with the new controls, the atmosphere still remains, which can be quite tense, and even, dare I say, a touch frightening at times, although I am a bit of a wuss when it comes to scary games. I am a little surprised they didn't include a map, but thanks to TOS Anthony via the Steam community, he came up with this little map which at least shows you exactly which gates lead where, so you might want to consider screenshotting that. And then we've got value. They're releasing the game at £15.89 or your regional equivalent, and I think you'd be hard pressed to knock that price. To do everything's going to take you about 25 hours, and it has a 5.5 gigabyte download, but it's really the sheer amount of love, attention, and time that's gone into bringing this remaster across and setting a bit of a benchmark for what a remaster should look like. If you hold no nostalgia for the original, then gameplay-wise, there are better games out there, but through its sound design and general atmosphere, I still think it's more than a worthwhile adventure to experience. The list of fixes, changes and improvements is quite frankly unbelievable. I'll put the full list down in the description if you're interested. Overall, it's been a lovely experience revisiting this game, and I would happily see Night Dive remaster other classics from back in the day. It gets a Switch Up score of 83%. Thanks to all of you that watch the channel, to our patrons, to anyone that is as old as I am and can appreciate hiding from their parents playing their N64 on their 14 inch CRT TV. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys! See ya! Long time no see, Michael!